All right, we're going to take a look at number 10 from the second law review sheet. In this problem, a 15 gram bullet, we've got to change that to kilograms, 0 0.015 kilograms, is going to be shot from a rifle. It takes 2.5 times 10 to the negative third seconds for the bullet to leave the barrel of the gun, and it exits the barrel with a speed of 715 meters per second. We're going to assume the, acceler the acceleration of the bullet is constant, so we want to know what force had to be exerted on the bullet while it's in the barrel of the gun. A number that's in the problem but not explicitly given is zero meters per second for the initial speed because a bullet's not moving before you pull the trigger. Anytime you get some kinematic stuff, in this problem you have V-naught, V-F, and T, and we're trying to find some forces stuff, chances are, and this is the case in this problem, that we're going to be finding acceleration using kinematics variables first. That way we can use acceleration in our F equals MA at the end of the problem since we're trying to solve for force. Since we have V-naught, VF, and T, and we're trying to solve for A, we're going to pick the equation without D in it, which is if this one, VF equals V-naught plus AT. A little bit of algebra to solve for A. We just subtract V-naught to the other side, which is why we have VF minus V-naught. Divide by the time to get A all by itself, and now we can plug in our numbers. 715 meters per second minus zero meters per second, and we're going to divide that by the time, which is 2.5 times 10 to the negative third seconds. Plug that into our calculator, and we get a very large acceleration of 286,000 meters per second squared, but it kind of makes sense that it's large since we're talking about a bullet in a gun. Now that we have A, we can go and take a look at Newton's second law. So we're just trying to find the force acting on this bullet right here, and that's going to equal MA, since it's the only force acting on the bullet that's going to make it accelerate. So F equals MA, we have mass, it was given in the problem at 0 0.015 kilograms, we just solved for the acceleration, 286,000 meters per second squared, plug it into our calculator, and we get the force of 4,290 newtons. Number 11. In this problem, a 95 kilogram person is standing on a scale that just happens to be in an elevator. We want to know what the apparent weight of this person is when the elevator is accelerating up and down, or it's up 1.8 meters per second squared, and also down negative 1.3 meters per second squared. So first thing first, we have to make sure we have our arrows correct. The normal force is pushing up on him. The, gra the force of gravity is pulling down. And what are we trying to find? What is apparent weight? It's whatever the scale is reading. When the elevator moves upward, the ground is quite literally pushing up into your feet, making you feel like you weigh more. And if there was a scale right here, it's getting squished up into your feet, squishing the scale, making it read more than your weight. If the elevator accelerates downward, then the floor is literally falling away from you. So the scale is going to read less because it's pulling away from your feet as you try and sort of catch up to it as the elevator moves downward. So when the acceleration is 1.8 meters per second squared up, we have an equation, which is our normal force, which is upward, minus gravity, which is downward, equals ma. Solving for the normal force, which is what the scale is reading, we're going to move the force of gravity to the other side by adding it. Now we can just plug in our numbers. The mass is 95 kilograms. The acceleration was given at 1.8 meters per second squared. It's positive because it was upward acceleration. And force of gravity is 95 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Plug that into my calculator and I get 1,102 newtons. For part B, my normal force is still up, my gravity is still down, and that's still going to equal MA. I'm still going to add force of gravity to the other side to get normal force by itself. And now I plug in my numbers again, 95 kilograms for mass. And this time for acceleration, it's negative 1.3 meters per second squared, negative because the acceleration is down. The mass is still 95 kilograms, G is still 9.8 meters per second squared, and I plug all this into my calculator to find out that I weigh less when the, accel when the elevator is accelerating downward, which makes sense, and it's 807.5 newtons. Number 12. We're going to be lifting a grocery bag up off of the ground. The maximum force that the grocery bag can withstand is 250 newtons. We're going to accelerate 20 kilograms of groceries at a rate of 5 meters per second squared. We want to know, well, how hard do we have to pull up on the grocery bag to make this happen? A lot of people want to just plug 250 newtons in for a force of pull, but that you can't do that. And the reason for that is because we're actually saying, hey, how hard do we have to pull? to make it move 
five meters per second squared. If we pull with 250 newtons, it's not going to make it go five meters per second squared. It's either going to be more or it's going to be less. The point of the 250 newtons is to say, if I pull more than that, the bag is going to break and I'm going to have groceries all over the place. If I pull less than that, then it's okay and the bag is going to be fine. So I have force to pull up. I have gravity down. Some people want to try and add a normal force into this, but you're lifting this so it's not on the ground. There is no normal force. My equation is force of pull up minus force of gravity down is going to equal MA. We're solving for the force of pull. So we're going to add force of gravity to the other side, giving me MA plus force of gravity. Plugging in my numbers, I get 20 kilograms times the acceleration, which is 5 meters per second squared plus the force of gravity, which is 20 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's going to leave me with a force of pull that is 296 newtons. So to accelerate the bag, five meters per second squared, I have to pull 296 newtons. So if I do that, I'm pulling more than 250 newtons. And that means my bag is going to break.